What is up guys, Guntex here from FG Gaming. So today we're just gonna have a quick look at the consumable lines. So in terms of consumables I like to split mine into two sections as you can clearly see. Top is my potions and any little interesting things that I have and the bottom is my weapons and uh, some useful items that I keep on me. So first up is just your general slayer potions, slayer potions for everything. As well as these I like to keep the uh, elemental slaying for damage against elementals. If you're fighting the elemental fractal um, at the end of the dredge one, it's nice to know you can deal an extra 10% damage against him. Um, I also like to keep scale venom, 16 copper each. In the description I'll put a link to where you can find these. Very, very nice. Um, I also keep the Scarlet Armies, again for Fractals, and then just our Maintenance Oil and Sharpening Stones. So, really nice maintenance buffs. Keeps our power up, so um, they're good if, you're, if you pug your dungeon and your team's lacking on a bit of DPS. Some other foods I keep, I like to keep Feast of truff Truffle Steak. I don't keep the actual plates because I find that if I need to put down a plate it means the whole team is lacking so I like to buff the whole team just with a full feast. The Minotaur Steaks, really cheap and um, it's good a uh, little bit less than the uh, curry butternut squash soup so I like to keep those. Same line as the butternut squash and then we have sweet and spicy butternut squash which is the power and ferocity. So this is just your general items that you will choose between to keep that power up and to keep you hitting a lot harder. I personally just like to pop the Minotaur stakes at the start of a fight and then um, DPS with that. If our team is lacking or I'm finding the boss hits me extremely hard I will pop the Candy Dragon Rolls or the Omnom Berry Pies if the team's taking a long time to kill a mob. I don't want to be popping two uh, Dragon Rolls, I just want to pop one Omnom Berry. Most dungeons will take you a half an hour with a with a bad pug group, so it's nice to know that that half an hour buff will sustain you for the whole dungeon. Some other things that I like to keep on me, very odd it may seem, is some spiced meat and cabbage stew. Now this is really nice, if um, I'm in COE and we're fighting Subject Alpha, and we're leaving by the front door, he has that massive AOE that he, he fills the whole area with, a lot of people don't know how to dodge. I personally like to put this on so I can just focus purely on my dodges refilling faster. And then also camp greatsword or if I'm on a different character, I can just purely know that my dodges will sustain me with that extra 20% refill rate. May seem a bit odd but I do recommend getting those. Anything higher is going to cost a lot more. Next up, I like to keep um, Kalkarik chocolate bars, don't know how to say that. Now I keep these purely at the end of maybe Jade Moor or the Molten Alliance Fractal where you've fought your way through the whole Fractals, you're now on your your daily and at the very end you'll get a massive Karma Boost. Pop this at the very end and you will get a 5% increase. Very nice just to know that's there just for that. Only a couple of silver so I like to keep a few on me of those. Um, next up is just purely and simply um, the experimental remnants. Now these are very, very different sort of buff. If we are going to put these on, we need to keep up strife, so we're going to move back and forth as we attack. Very annoying for some people. I do find them very effective when we're fighting certain mobs, um, or if we're just kite fighting a boss. So if your team is bad DPS, and you're maybe kite fighting in TA against the uh, final boss, you can pop those and just strafe back and forward while DPSing for heavier damage. No crits affect them, so it's nice to know you just have a base 8% damage. These are an event, and they are a countdown, so it's really nice you can buy them on one character and spread them across all. It is found in Kershaw, so in the description again, I'll put a link to these. Okay, and then next up we have some other things such as our Ogre Pet Whistles. Very good to uh, help take aggro off us. Same as the Fire Elemental Powder. If your team is organized in Ara, as you're fighting Loopy as he's entering uh, his 75% stage, he will go in Vaughn and then put down a large AoE. If your team is organized, you will all stack inside a Guardian Shield 
and pop these two potions to create more more adds on you which in turn increases the AoE that he will do in turn means that he can go from 75% to 25% in a few seconds skips his 50% phase it's it's really nice if you do get a team like that and you're organized enough to do it secondly harpy feathers these have been nerfed so if we pop one and then quickly pop them again we have a six second cooldown now these stack to any s stealth skills except for our ash legion spike hits which just gives us standard uh, 10 seconds of invis now this is really good for if you're in the dredge fractal and you need to channel the uh, control panel or COE if your team has failed and you need one more channel jump up start your channel maybe if you have a thief you can put a shadow refuge on after eight seconds or so if your team is that organized that one's really nice but in terms of the harpy feathers they do stack with standard invis so if you have a long run ahead of you and a thief puts a shadow refuge but you know that thief isn't traded because you've just got 10 seconds or you know previously that that run is extremely long and it takes you more than 10 seconds as you're running enter the field throw one down then you quickly double click again and you wait one zero and again so that has given you six seconds of stealth on top of that 10 seconds so that's 16 seconds so by the time you leave that you will have 15 seconds of stealth and your harpy feathers will be up again so as you're running you can continue to throw those harpy feathers as desired and that pretty much null and voids that six percent uh, nerf that they have received another thing I like to keep is rocks now if our team is just wiped and the boss has a defiant stack or a few defiant stacks I like to open the combat, uh, the combat just by simply throwing a rock at the boss it is a 1200 range so it's nice to know I have a 1200 range and I don't need to put any of my skills on cooldown for the boss draw I just simply throw a rock at him a lot of people say you can still do it to the ice brood in COE personally if your DPS is not high enough to kill him or you're not good at dodging you just simply need to be better at dodging or need a team with better DPS so don't use rocks for any mechanics in game because most bosses have defiance stacks now so it's pointless I just like to keep them there for the drawing aspect and removing defiance stacks if we do wipe now that takes care of the uh, top section which is our food and stuff for weapons everyone knows that you always keep your weapons with energy and then you always keep ones with different stuff um, Sigil of the Night, Sigil of Force, that sort of stuff, Outlaws um, Undead, all that sort of stuff so you know to keep those on you um, some useful items Personal Trader Express, Merchant Express very nice, some people like to keep a bank on them as well these are not great for parties because one it takes up the one merchant being able to be used so make sure you're the only person in your party that can use them and two you are the only person that can use them so keep that in mind when putting it down I enjoy trolling it maybe a world boss I put it down after someone asks for a merchant and just watch everyone flock to it trying to open it um, I keep essence of luck on me because I just change them into the highest tier using artificer later I keep mystic Forge salvage kits. Now these are made by the three highest salvage kits and mystic forge stones. It's three mystic forge stones and the yellow, blue and green salvage kit. Very easy. Um, mystic forge stones you can get from map completion or simply the dailies. I do recommend getting a copper fed salvage omatic. It does help keep your inventory clean and it is really really good. Um, it does only save you a couple copper per use but in terms of the long run, the amount of salvaging that everyone now does, this will repay itself fairly quickly. I like to keep a black line salvage kit on me in case I get an exotic that doesn't sell for more than 5 gold. I will simply just salvage it. It is no use to me. Um, and then I have unimportant things such as the festival tokens, which is the currently current event in Guild Wars. Now, th all that being said, you may be saying, well, every time I open my inventory, I have a massive inventory in front of my face. Now, there are two ways to make uh, inventory management a lot easier. 
First is on my left hand side, you may have seen my bags and you may be thinking well, he has 140 slots but you can safely see I have 47 always filled. So I am still only at the 100. Now the way I like to organise my inventory so it organises itself so during a dungeon if my inventory is full I can simply open it and I know exactly where I need to salvage to create more space. Firstly, I like to have my starter backpack. If I don't have 100 slots unlocked, I don't have this. I then go to a craftsman bag, which once you salvage something, it puts all your crafting items sort of through here, through the first 20, which you can then simply get rid of by depositing your collectibles. Next is an equipment box. This is where all the items that you pick up will go. I like to keep two of these. So, so far we have 20, 40, 60, 80. And finally an oiled leather pack. Now this will be the back of your inventory and it will put the junk items. Any unlocks that you do do, uh, just simply put a 20 slot bag there. Um, I don't recommend using the fractal ones as it disorganizes your inventory a lot. Just simply the orichalcum ones or even the leather working packs. They are the cheapest at the moment and only just over 10 gold to buy them. So it may sound like a lot. But um, if you are dedicated to dungeons and sick of your inventory getting all messed up, that is a really nice way to uh, pretty much make your inventory organize itself. So on the fly, you can simply keep your inventory nice and clean. There is one last thing. Whilst in a dungeon, a lot of people say to me, well, you just changed weapons. Like, um, we're sort of about to fight a boss and we need a bow. So... I can simply put on my bow, um, fire, 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 and then at the end of it, you can see how tedious this is. What we can then do is take our inventory and we're going to drop it to four slots. Then depending on your first part of inventory or how many items you may need, is you simply put it up. Now depending on the dungeon that you're about to run, so, alright, the dungeon I'm about to run is a bad team. I may need to draw so we may wipe, there is no karma and my base damage is going to be through my minotaur stakes. I then know I can put it like that. I can even reduce my inventory again by simply putting it up there. Depending on the slayer potions I need, I will simply change them out. Maybe we're doing honor of the waves. Then what I can do is I can drop it to where I need it, so I only need it about there. And that has all the buffs I need, remembering it is two by 5 or 2 by 4 is the smallest you can go. Now I say 2 because what we're going to then do is take our inventory and attach it above our map. This may be tedious because some um, bosses have their little health pool. We can simply drop that um, and then we can see their health pool above. We can push this down a bit more. Doesn't matter what sort of inventories we get, uh, what sort of drops we get as our inventory will sort itself out. So really nice way, we can attach that then, and we know, okay, boss is coming up, we can change our uh, items and stuff. What we can do here is we can then scroll down, and we then have access to our weapons. So I can simply change that there, so we can be DPSing, and then our next boss comes along, and we can simply run up, okay, it's going to be a kite fight, I can be attacking, attacking, boss is dead at the boss death we can swap back our weapons really nice sort of uh, way to quickly um, look at your inventory um, and that is uh, all really plain and simple so guys that's really really quick way of looking at consumables I'd like to go in a bit more detail but um, yeah it is really self-explanatory and using a consumable is pretty much for yourself to use. It's all on what ones you like to use. They are my top favourites and just remember to keep buffed because you really do look like a pug if you're not buffing your character properly with food and um, so just keep that in mind when you do enter a dungeon you do buff up and you do use the actual dungeon buff to help you out with damage. It doesn't make you look good it also helps with your DPS and helps with the whole uh, team in terms of you being able to stay alive that little bit longer so guys yeah that's the video for today if you 
pretty much want to talk further about it you can contact me through in game I've put my details in the details and again thanks and catch you next time